Did I scare you? I hope I didn't scare you that much. This is just for shiggles. This is just for fun. Hey guys, I've been reading some really funky out there books lately. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the season changing, if it's just the fact that it's been raining and it's a little bit depressing, but I've been reading some transgressive, strange, fiction lately. I won't shut up about Bright Easton Ellis' The Shards. I loved it. Highly recommend listening to that on audiobook. Even if you're not an audiobook person, it just gets in your head and it will not leave. But I'm okay with that because it was kind of a, like a fun horror weird novel. I also just finished Frisk by Dennis Cooper, which, um, oh, that was a tough one. That was, that was one that, that was one that hurt mama, that hurt mama. And I knew what I was getting into when I picked up that Dennis Cooper book and I wanted to read a Dennis Cooper book. It was in my like vision board of 2024 authors that I wanted to explore, but I don't know. I mean, from what I understand, this is a series. Frisk is one in like four of a series and it's highlighting this uh, kind of like sordid, subversive, attraction that Dennis, this this character named Dennis, and uh, it, it was rough. I don't know how I felt about that book. Honestly, it made me really depressed and made me feel really dirty, but I, I, I seeked it, I sought it out. Also, what's even weirder is that Dennis Cooper has the same exact birthday as me, January 10th, which I understand the sort of goings on in somebody's head that's born in deep winter, at least in my hemisphere. So I, 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 I understand that, but baby, sometimes you do not have to execute it, you know what I'm saying? You do not have to. So that's where I've, I've been at, and you know, to kind of deal with that, I'm gonna continue reading a weird book. Why not? I'm ready for some Japanese suspenseful crime fiction. This is Real World by Natsuo Kurino. This is an author who I would say is probably best known for the book Out. I feel like that had a resurgence in the book world. It had a sort of like a, a massive rebirth as of lately. I feel like I saw so many people reading and talking about it. I saw it in so many bookstores. This is not that book. <laughs> This is a different one. This is real world. This is all about a bunch of schoolgirls who think see a murder. I love that. I'm obsessed with that. I just started it. So far it's fine. It's just laying the foundation of the main girl, how she's kind of like this insecure, shy schoolgirl. Kind of feels like a little out of place within her friend group. I'm sure that's gonna play out well. But I love that Japanese suspense, that Japanese horror. I went through a time in my life with my family that we were watching exclusively Japanese horror. And it was probably because at that point in like the early 2000s, Hollywood was absolutely taking over and remaking all of these Japanese horror film classics. You had The Ring, which was like an okay adaptation. It was like this whole phenomenon that was just taking over. And for a little while, we were pretty obsessed with it. My brother specifically was so into it. So we watched a lot of strange Japanese films, which strange in like the most positive way possible. So I'm hoping to get some excitement out of this. So that's gonna be the journey. Let's get weird. Let's get suspenseful. Let's get mysterious. I'm ready to ride that horse. This is exactly what I look like when I wake up in the morning. You shouldn't. It's a big lie. Anyway, good morning, my studious, beautiful people. It's raining in New York City today. Don't worry, I've already had a full existential crisis over it. <laughs> I'm gonna read today. I'm 
how many pages into this? 62 pages in, and I am actually quite enjoying this. This is a little bit different than I thought it was going to be. My impression of this was that it was going to center around one girl, the main narrator from the first story, but it seems like it's gonna be shifting perspectives. I'm on to the second chapter right now, and it's taken on a different narrative. One of the other friends, a friend who's kind of grappling with her own identity at this point. It's all looking into the different circumstances of relationship between the girls and the alleged killer. Now, I didn't really talk about too much of what this book was explicitly about, but it's about a murder that takes place next door to the first narrator. Follow me here. Sorry, it's a little jumbled. It looks like it's going to just flow into the relationship that each of these schoolgirls have to the narrator and to the relationship of murder in general. Sparky Durky. Sparky Durky? <laughs> Whatever. It's all kind of feeling like a mystery. And speaking of mystery, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a free mobile hidden object game that follows June. You're following June as she is trying to uncover who murdered her sister. Very similar to the book that I'm following right now, so I'm fully immersed in that mysterious sort of context. This takes place in the backdrop of the glamorous 1920s, so you can imagine that everybody is dressed to the tees much like I am in my stunning outfit. Alongside the drama of trying to figure out who was the murderer, you are able to expand and decorate a mansion that provides further perks and revealing sort of other storylines as you play. I've been having so much fun with June's Journey, as you know. It is well documented on this channel that I am a game girl. I love puzzles, I love New York Times connections, and I've been playing this in the morning when I am trying to wake up my brain. I do find it's quite stimulating to race against the clock and try to get the extra bonus points once you locate something in the various levels. And you can download June's Journey for free with the link in my bio or by scanning the QR code. June's Journey is available on iOS mobile devices as well as Android devices and on PC through Facebook games. So thank you so much again to June's Journey for sponsoring the portion of today's video. Oh yeah, I should also probably get changed. I wanted to talk to you about some book mail that I recently got because I've got some good books. I'm booked out, baby, and ready to go. The one of them I've read already, but I still want to talk about it because I feel like I haven't talked about it. The first book is Great Expectations by Vincent Cunningham. This was good. This definitely isn't going to be like my favorite book of the year, but this book I thought was written incredibly well. It talks about Vincent's journey. Well, it's a fictional take on Vincent's part as a fundraiser in the infancy of the Obama administration and kind of the subsequent historical impact. I thought that this was really interesting looking into kind of like political fiction and the, <laughs> the wildness that is campaign fundraising. There's a lot of ins and outs to it. I thought for the most part, it was a really great debut and I would like to see more from this author. The second book, The Observable Universe, which is a book that I am so, so, so excited about. From my understanding, this is Heather McGaldon's kind of coming to terms with both of her parents passing away from AIDS in 1990s Los Angeles. And she kind of gets deeper into the epidemic and kind of these cross paths and parallels between the internet and the whole concept of kind of going viral. I definitely am gonna pick this up soon. I also love that cover. I am a cover. Ho. The reason that I am so moved by these books being sent to me, and it's so exciting to see people that you admire and people who are so worthy of accomplishing their dreams, accomplishing their dreams. If you have been on the book space on YouTube for a little while, you might've come across Jalen 
at the bar in the bookcase. He is a phenomenal interviewer. He is a phenomenal communicator. He is a phenomenal overall person. There's such a warmth and a passion about the way that he conducts himself. Probably one of the most impressive things about his channel is that he interviews a lot of your favorite authors and has these long conversations that you can just tell the authors are so relieved to have. Jalen is fantastic. And what's so exciting to see is that he is the assistant director of marketing for Random House and Hogarth books. He sent me these books. That's so crazy to see. And it's so exciting to see people accomplishing their dreams. I've known about the promotion in his life for a little while, but it's so nice to see him achieving and doing amazing things and just writing blurbs about books, something that he's passionate about. So just wanted to give a little shout out to Jalen. Highly, highly suggest checking out his YouTube. I think he also runs a really successful Instagram. He's just honestly a peach. So, so exciting to see that. I have two other books that were sent to me. Well, only one was supposed to be sent to me, but there's a little bit of a funny story around it. The first book that I got was Blessings. That's also a beautiful cover. They got me with the cover. This is from my understanding, a Nigerian sort of queer fiction. And that's right up my alley. This apparently wasn't supposed to be sent to me, which I love. <laughs> I love a little mix up. The whole packaging that this came with was talking about Elizabeth Strout's new book, which was fine, which was fine. I was like, all right, this isn't Elizabeth Strout, but I'm, I'm still gonna read it. Fast forward to a week later or so, and I get Elizabeth Strout's new book in the mail, tell me everything. One of my favorite letters to date is the little insert that they put in here that says, well, that didn't quite go as planned. There was a bit of a mix up with the book you received, but I'm excited to once again, introduce you to Tell Me Everything by Elizabeth Strout. Everything I said in the first letter still applies. <laughs> I like Elizabeth Strout. I read her book for the first time a couple of months ago and I enjoyed it, so exciting. And last is a book that I purchased. Oh my God, my back, why am I squatting like that? <laughs> I'm still gonna do it. Last is a book that I purchased on my own and I'm so excited because it is the first book that I have going and reading on my Patreon book club. If you don't know, I have a Patreon. A lot of extra content, archived videos, TBTs, are we still using that? I don't know. Just started it April 1st, so there's still tons of time to join if you wanna join. If you just wanna see my thoughts on it, you can definitely head over there and check it out. I've heard wonderful things about this book. I'm very excited. And yeah, let's go. That's a lot of books. And now I'm gonna go outside and destroy my hair. Sacrifices, the sacrifices. might not be able to, but it is downpouring. It's been downpouring all day, all day, all day. Hasn't changed, has not stopped raining for three days straight. I'm starting to lose my composure. I'm starting to lose my chill. I'm not a fun, chill girl anymore. I'm seen, not really. That is how I feel right now. I'm just gonna try to play it, play it cool. Play it really, play it cool. I'm cool, I'm fine. I'm fine. I have had time to read and I am almost done with this book. Not really, I have like 70 more pages to go. This is a really, really, really strange book. Every single chapter is a new narrator or it's kind of a, a part two or three of one of the narrators. You actually get to experience the mindset 
of the murderer. Basically, he's the only guy in this story so far that I've read. It's all the girls in the friend group telling their stories, and they all have very distinct personalities and are kind of representative of certain frames of mind. I'm assuming kind of stereotypical frame of mind. I can see where this is all going. This is very much kind of like a commentary on the boy's disgust for woman. Hood? W women? Woman. Woman. Women. For women. Specifically, he murders his mother. That's who's murdered. That is like in the first couple of pages in the book, so that's not a spoiler. There's a lot of like edible complex kind of woven in. You know, murdering is a very, it's a very passionate way that he murdered her. So there's a lot of that going into this. I'm like wondering what the resolve is gonna be, you know? I'm like half wondering, is there gonna be like a twist ending or is it just really hyper-focusing on that commentary? But it's, it's, I mean, it's very quickly read. I will say, I feel like the translation of this is very clunky or the author is just kind of struggling with writing like 17 year olds. Cause it's like, hey, <laughs> That's not cool. What do you mean? That's not cool. <laughs> Damn. You know, that kind of thing, which I'm fine with, and I'm totally camped out and love that, but, you know, not the love. Not the love. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm dealing with right now. I'm going a little bit insane in the house. Ah, but I'm gonna do a nice, long, 45-minute workout. I've been working out, baby. And I have some serious questions for you. <laughs> was the book any good? Uh, no, actually, it really wasn't that good. Was there some mysterious ending sword? Uh, nope. Absolutely no mystery. <laughs> Not at all. Did we have something crazy happen? Uh, no, no. Basically, how it began was how it ended. Okay, well then why, why, why am I here? <laughs> you know, why am I here? Uh, well, you said you had greasy hair, so you just wanted to do it in that 50s way. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Sorry. I mean, it looks good, it looks good, though. But <sighs> yeah, I know that. It's greasy. That's fine. Sorry. Kiddos, listen. Whoa. Oh, hi. It's the real me now. Well, maybe. Kiddos, any kiddos, do not start smoking. Please do not. Everything stinks. That was fake. And one or two inhales was enough to do me in. Oof. I'm back to being me. Kind of. I do feel a little bit fabulous with this hair. And there was truth to what I just said. Also, I am listening to a great podcast that is talking about the femme fatale and the resurgence of kind of like the film noir in the 1990s. And that is You Must Remember This. I'm so fascinated by it. And right now I'm listening to a huge section of it called Erotic 90s. And it's all highlighting these films from the 90s that were kind of unprecedented and really kind of delving into the sexual and the sensual. It's so great. and. I I suggest that a lot more than the book that I just read. Yeah, I finished it. I finished it this morning. And I was waiting for the last page to show me something. Show me that there was gonna be some twist ending, that one of the characters was gonna come out and say, oh no, I didn't do this. I just, you know, was running away because I was a fragile character and I needed to have a crazy plot line, but none of that happened. None of it. None of it happened. It was just basically a continuation of the same story throughout. 
the four characters, the four main girls, I should say, I understand what the author was trying to do, was trying to highlight distinct personalities or at least kind of how society sees women, right? That they're put into these boxes of like who they should be, how they should present themselves. But it just like, it kind of felt like some of the characters were just put there, you know, just being like, well, let me just like have one chapter on this person <laughs> and then just not a follow up. And then the boy who was supposed to obviously be the antagonist and kind of represent the fragility of people who, who see women as like a threat kind of, just wasn't really full bodied at all. Like I get what was trying to be depicted here, but I don't think that it did it really successfully. I just felt like it was trying to have this approach of doing it through the eyes of like a murder and how there's like accomplices, but not really, and telling it through the eyes of children who are still so receptive to how the world might change and kind of gullible in a way, but I just thought that it it didn't, there was, there was no climax for me. There was no climax. And I feel like there's so much that could have been done with this storyline. And it just was not, it felt very, very clunky, which I'm gonna just blame on the translation. But yeah, yeah, girl, yeah, girl, yeah, girl. Vocal Fry initiated. I'm interested to read out. I've heard really positive things about that. And then there's another off, there's another book by this author called Grotesque, which title alone, interested. I don't know though. I wanted this to be so much more than it was. And it just kind of felt a little bit like for a younger audience in a way, you know? Maybe it's just cause I'm coming out of <laughs> Dennis Cooper and Brett Easton Ellis. Dennis Cooper definitely being the top of that tree of just absolute destruction and chaos. Anyway, you guys are wonderful. You're fabulous. Check out my book club if you want to. We're having a lot of fun so far. You guys are wonderful. You're fabulous. Thank you so much. I will see you in the next one. My bathroom dehumidifier just came on. Maybe it's something scary. <gasps>